So uh, provisioning IoT devices uh, can prove challenging. Devices need to be connected to the web to actually get credentials uh, or something like that. So uh, today on the IoT show, we're going to demo a very cool technology from Chirp, uh, based in the UK, uh, that developed a way using sound to provision devices. And, and Yanni is here to demo that. And we have the team from Chirp on Skype uh, to talk to us about this new technology. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Internet of Things show. This is Olivier, your host. Uh, today we have a very cool demo uh, with Chirp uh, and uh, its integration with uh, Microsoft uh, Azure IoT Central. Uh, so I have a Yen with me on, on stage. Hey Yen, how you doing? Hi, good, thank you. So Yen is a dev lead uh, in the uh, IoT Central team. And uh, then we have the, the Chirp team, actually, which is on Skype. Um, hey guys. Hi there. Hey. Hey, so this is James and Damien. How are you guys? Very well, thanks. Good, cool. So, um, guys, how about you tell us a bit about yourself and about Chirp? And where, uh, first, where are you calling on, in from, guys? Sure. So, uh, our company is based in, in London. Um, we're uh, a startup specializing in sending data using sound. And uh, I, I act as our CTO. And I'm joined here by our, our engineer, Damien. OK, cool. Oh. So um, with Yen here, uh, we're going to show a little demo. Uh, but before we jump into that demo, um, can you guys tell us a bit uh, you know, what exactly you've been working on with Yen and that we're going to see in a second here? Sure. David, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, so basically, um, we've got our technology, which is uh, allowing to send some data through the sound. And um, the goal for this project was to make the MX chip uh, to send, no, to receive some uh, credentials uh, from uh, Microsoft Azure. Okay. So in a nutshell, what you're saying is that using audio, you are about to provision a device uh, for its credentials to connect to the cloud securely, right? Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So how about we just like have like we handed that to Ian for, for a minute for him to show us the demo. He's going to walk us through the process, what's going on, and why we're doing that. And then uh, we'll get back to you guys with some Q&A. That's good. Awesome. Yeah. Kay. All right. So, uh, so what I've got on my screen right now is I've got the uh, our provisioning uh, little applet here. So we have, we've done a prototype where we've actually integrated this into IoT Central. Okay. Uh, but today, we're just going to show you this kind of th this separate page here. Got it. Got it. And, and maybe rewind a little. Uh, so maybe the, the, we, we need to remind people that it's about uh, using credentials to connect a device to IoT Hub or IoT Central is one of our solutions, right? Yeah. So, so one of the biggest pain points of getting any of these little wireless devices onto yep. you know, onto the internet, onto the internet, again so connected to your Wi-Fi, then getting the data up into yep. Azure IoT is how do you do that, right? So, what we've done in the past is we've used like a, a Wi-Fi hotspot that we've built into that device okay. Okay. that allows you then to connect to it. But the problem then becomes. You're on your regular Wi-Fi, which is connected to the internet, mm -hmm. and you go and then you go to a, a IoT Central. You get the credentials for the device, yeah. um, and then you have to cut and paste that. Then you got to change your Wi-Fi over uh, to go to the Wi-Fi yes. that's on the device hotspot. And if you've messed up at any point in there, you, you're back and forth between the two, which yeah. becomes a bit of a pain. And and you know we've heard that mm -hmm. from the customers, right? Yeah. Said, so, hey. You know, can you make it simpler? Can you make, and that's always the thing. Can you make it simpler to get the devices onto IoT makes Central? Sense, makes sense. So, like switching basically from a very manual process to something that's like a bit more automated. Yeah. Uh, I figure there's another like broader scenario, which is like if you have your device that is actually coming out of the factory and has a generic piece of code, no credentials in there, no Wi-Fi configuration either. Yeah. You can imagine having this device turning on, being being listening in that case, and we'll see that technology from Chirp listening for a sound. You emit the sound based on whatever configuration you want that device to be set up in. Yep. And then the device gets that configuration, sets up the Wi-Fi chip, gets the credentials for IT Hub, and connects. Right? Yeah, it's all in one go. And you'll see, right, you know, it's a 10-second burst of sound around that. And mm -hmm. then at the end of that 10 seconds, the device has all the Wi-Fi credentials it needs, plus the connection string to, to, to its endpoint to be able to start sending data. 
Cool. Um, and you know that was the real impetus here was the fact that you know these these boards come with a microphone built into them out you know out, yeah. out of the box, mm -hmm. um, and we just wanted to utilize that to be able to say hey, okay, we can we can use this as a simple way, and that's where we, you know we started doing some research on how we were going to use that microphone, okay. and that's kind of how we got connected with the Chirp guys and, okay. and to do this. Well, let's see it. All right, so uh, on the page here, you can see I've got a little form here. Um, and I've pre-filled it here just for the sake of time. So it's the top one here is the Wi-Fi we're going to connect to. Okay. Then the password that, that uh, we connect that, that, that for that Wi-Fi. Okay. And then finally down here we have the connection string here. And I've, okay. I've got, got my connection string, so I'm still connected to, my, uh, to, my, you know, to the Wi-Fi here, uh -huh. not to the board's Wi-Fi. And, and this is uh, Azure IoT uh, Central. And if I go to the you know, connect my device, you know, all I've done is I've copied that connection string out okay. of IoT Central okay. and then pasted it over into the other yeah. window here. All right, so you know, the next stage is then you know, we hit the magic button, the, the send data, and we'll start playing the sound out of the speakers on okay. the laptop. Uh, the device right now, uh, when I turn it on, it's yeah. in listening mode. Okay. It's, re it's ready to receive. So, okay, we have to be quiet now and we send the data. So data's been sent. If we go over to our window here, we can see that the SSID has been sent over. You can see my password, which I'll be changing later. <laughs> and then you can see the connection gonna, string I'm below there. I'm going to hack your network. <laughs> uh, and what we see on the device, it's already sent uh, two messages now. This green LED has come on, which means it's also pulled down its twin data uh, awesome. from Azure IoT. And then if we go over to IoT Central, any second now, we should start to see some data come in here on the right. From the device, with the usual little delay that we have in IT. There's a little delay because it has to go through, through time series insights. Uh, but there, there we go. go. There well, we go. We've got the data, data coming, coming through. So basically, zero, absolutely zero touch provisioning. So you exactly. just set up all the, the settings like Wi Fi and credentials for the cloud. And you can actually imagine other things you could set up in there, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's 10 seconds. You get to hear a little bit of R2D2 uh, sound, <laughs> yes. and, and, and then uh, the device is sending, sending data. Awesome, cool. Uh, well, actually, that that uh, that brings some questions for for um, Damien and James um, uh, out there in in, uh, in in UK. So, guys, first question I have for you is security, right? We're talking. So, I'm imagining a scenario where you have this guy who is like the the guy was installing the equipment in the factory, right? And he's like coming with that new device and says, "Hey, this is the one that's going to go there on this like little tablet." And say, "Hey, I'm going to provision that device." What about security? Because that sound, everyone can hear it. Yeah. So, so, so one thing we did on our side, and I think then, then uh, James mm. and Damien can, can chime in. One of the things we've done on our side is that it's not in this, in this prototype here, but we uh, display a PIN number yep. um, on the device. So the device generates a random PIN number, mm -hmm. which you then put into, uh, into the form over there. there okay. And we use that as, a, as an encryption key. Mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of one of the ways that we've done kind of you made it, made it secure on our side. Okay. It's just not in that in this demo today. So <laughs> that, that makes sense. So be, but basically, that's something, and then we'll talk about the SDKs from Chirp. But there's something that actually can add on top. Yeah. Which is like the because it's, data, right? it's just you're just sending data a data stream, and, and it doesn't matter what those bytes look like. Yeah. Uh, you can you can send. It's just like sending a regular data stream. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Like it. So any, anything more security wise on your side, guys, to to add to that? Sure. So. so uh, I would just reiterate what, what Ian uh, mentioned about Chirp strictly being the, the, the transport layer here, so that any industry standard uh, security techniques can be layered on top uh, of, of, of our channel, uh, be that uh, the, the PIN methods that, uh, that Ian mentioned, but standard techniques like TOTP um, or a private key encryption. Got it. Uh, another question, which is because that's a sound, like everyone can hear it once again. Can you imagine uh, broadcasting to set up several devices? Kind of like saying, hey, I'm going to set up like 10 devices that are in my RAM just like I just turned on with the same sound? Yes, yeah, that's one of the beauties of using sound, right? So uh, any, any device within earshot receives that data. We've just talked about security, so whether or not that device is able to act upon the data it, it receives is up to the third party developer uh, that's under their control but certainly for more open implementations any device within earshot 
could be um, provisioned automatically, and that is is only limited by the by physically how many devices you can get uh, within within range of the uh, broadcaster. So you could really imagine uh, walking around a building, provisioning devices, or having multiple devices, um, you know, sitting in a rack, uh, being being provisioned uh, at, at once before being deployed. Makes sense. So, uh, guys, can you tell us where people can find more information and where they can get bits to get started, right? Because we're seeing very cool things on the web page and what's happening in the back end, whatever. So, where can guys, you know, find anything and what kind of things can define from you guys? Um, well, so basically, uh, you can download our SDK uh, or on Admin Center uh, website. Okay. So you have the full list of SDKs, including the one for the MX chip. Uh, and basically, yeah, as all our SDKs, just download it. Uh, it's quite straightforward to integrate, to okay. use. Uh, and yeah. So you, so you were saying there are several SDKs, and, and so for several devices? Uh, but it also has several languages because actually you were uh, Yen was using a website, right? So I guess yeah. there's some JavaScript things going on where you, you actually are working at creating the sound and then playing the sound, right? Yeah. The, so yeah, in the web page we use the uh, the JavaScript API, mm -hmm. uh, which then integrates with with uh, the Chirp backend. Got it. Uh, yeah. And you know, James, do you want to give a little bit more detail on that? Sure. I mean, w w one thing I would add is uh, that it's important to say that, that none of the audio actually goes uh, uh, anywhere uh, off off device. It's all processed uh, locally. So there's no there's no recording of the audio uh, or streaming of the audio uh, off device, and that's really great because it means that these devices can work uh, off completely completely offline. Uh, another thing I'd add is. Alongside our suite of SDKs for, for different platforms, we also offer a range of different protocols. Today, we've heard the, uh, the standard uh, Audible protocol, which yep. uh, somebody mentioned sounds a bit like RTD2. Um, but of course, we also offer uh, ultrasonic uh, data over sound communication, and that, that allows devices to uh, uh, where the transmission is completely inaudible. Yeah, so I can imagine scenarios where you're next to a plain engine that is on and actually using that still to communicate with that device, for example, or something like that, right? Yeah, or if you don't, or, if you want to do a long, you know, burst communications back and forth between devices, yeah. you can see like an edge device, right? And then having other devices mm -hmm. connected to that edge device. And you don't necessarily want that chirping sound going back and forth, but you can use the ultrasonic. You know, humans, yep. humans can't hear it. It might drive some dogs and that mad. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> about to say, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know that that way you can have that communication. We didn't. We chose not to use that on on the MX chip device. Yeah. One because that audible cue is quite nice for for users to, to hear, especially yeah. in the prototyping yeah. stage. Yeah. Um, and then then uh, we're working back and forth with the MX chip guys mm -hmm. to get to to the necessary fidel frequencies that we need to to uh, enhance it and get the ultrasonic work. In Makes as well. sense. That that. Um, I'm looking forward to that one. So we're going to add a link for people to get more information. Jem, someone else you want to add to that? Sure. So, so you should just head over to admin.chirp.io. OK, cool. So we'll add that link as well, so that way people yep. uh, know where to go. Uh, with the SDKs available and um, like with the demos you've been using, basically you've not been using that integration to yeah, exactly. well, you can still make it work, right? Yeah, and we'll, and we'll, try and we'll get these demos out uh, um, open source. To, you know, it shouldn't be a problem, yeah. and people can pick up that code and, and play with it. Yeah, I'm already, already thinking about uh, you know, the ways I'm going to configure my Wi-Fi and IoT up connection on my <laughs> other <laughs> devices. That's, That's pretty cool. Endless possibilities. Really. Yeah, no, I love that. OK, guys, there was a great demo, very interesting uh, new technology that actually uh, will go a long way, I'm convinced. Uh, thanks, guys, for calling in. Thanks, guys, for watching the IT show. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, see you soon.